straight to Real Madrid, though, and the link with Roberto Martinez, currently the Belgian manager, currently nothing official on the table. However, he is now the bookies' favourite to take over as, as Real Madrid boss. Surprising. Um, I, would, I would definitely say that. I think when you look at Martinez as a manager, myself personally, like I say, a little bit surprised that he's been linked to it, but I don't personally think that he's the type of manager that's needed at that football club at the moment. You know, I think with Martinez, he plays very expansive football going forward. What they need at the moment, Real Madrid, is that they're in a position where they're conceding so many goals. They need someone to set them up. Zidane did that. You know, people talk about the wonderful footballers he had going forward, but they were structured, they were set out well, they were defensively strong, and I think that's what they need to get back to first and foremost. After the World Cup, does he have the status of a Real Madrid manager now? Um, <laughs> it's due to the World Cup, mm. we're talking about him at Real Madrid. Um, but at the same time, look, I'm a big fan because I, I, you know, I witnessed what he was able to do at close hand at Swansea. Uh, he changed that football club. He mm. was, you know, the he. You could always tell a top manager when they're able to leave a club in a real good position and they're able to carry on that momentum. Stuck to his ide ideas, his principles, and what he left behind. Um, done a good job at Wigan. Was always fighting, you know. It was always difficult. Wigan didn't expect to, uh, you know. It was always avoiding relegation. Um, got him out of a few scrapes. Able to win an FA Cup, which was great. Um, but he just ran out of steam at the end. It was always yeah. a team like Wigan, and it's, no, and it's no disrespect to the club, but they're always going to flirt with relegation. Um, and then that year they did go down. Done a very good job at Everton first year round. Um, then the fans got a bit impatient with the style of football he was playing. Uh, Obviously, went from there, and you're like, well, where's he going to go now? And then the international one, the Belgian one, was a surprise to me because, you know, they had Wilmots before that, and I never felt they were going to achieve anything with Wilmots. I always felt it, they had a manager short of mm. being able to win with the players they have. So Martinez was a, was a surprise for me, but I think anyone really going into a World Cup with a the squad they have would have fancied their chances. And he'd done a very good job. You can't take that away from him. Got to the semi finals, uh, finished third. But with a group of players, it was a new lease of life for him as well. Real Madrid's a just, it's just, it's a different ball game. Of course, he's Spanish, and yeah, you, you, you know, he had no Real Madrid more mm. than any of us around this table. But um, I just believe with a lack of top-class managers at this present moment, the ones they would want are already taken. They're already in long contracts with football, you know, top football clubs. Very difficult to get out. The Conte one was looked. Um, like he's the top one out there at this present moment who isn't in work, but then if you go and get him, you've just paid off your last manager, mm. you've got to go and spend, you know, Chelsea would still have to receive a big lump sum of money for them to go and work for you, so I can maybe understand that, and I know we always talk about Madrid and the way they spend, um, they haven't spent as much over the last few years, but then why would they need to? They've just won three European yeah. Cups, you know, they're... No one's done that, and you know we're talking about your Ajaxes, your Bayern Munichs. But since the reform of the European Cup, the, you know the, what we see now, no one's been able to retain it. No matter go on on three times, um, so and four of the last five. Isn't oh, it? Yeah. It's an incredible, you know, they've had an incredible period. So we can look at the money they haven't spent. Why have they needed to? But they found themselves in this position. They got offered eighty odd million for a 32, 33 year old. All right, it's Ronaldo, and a lot of the <laughs> everything was based around him. He was, you know, the real stronghold at our football club. But I see that as decent business. Um, I believe they, I'm sure they went in for Hazard this summer. Couldn't quite, couldn't, couldn't quite get him. This coming the summer, they're going to, they're going to spend big again because they need to. They, a lot of their players they've stuck with this year, who have sort of come to the end of their, you know, um, incredible ability of what they've been able to achieve over the last five, six years. So every team, that's what happens. You know, we've seen with the great Liverpool teams, we've seen with Manchester mm. United down the years. Man you know, that's where Sir Alex Ferguson was incredible. Was he, he was able to see that happening before it got to that stage and able to move them on early doors. This Madrid team now, I think that European Cup last year kept the players being there again this year, which really, if they would have gone out earlier, they would have had an active summer. Um, but I think that's going to happen this year. Look, so Madrid will have the odd year, very, very rare. It doesn't go on for two and or three. I, think what, go, I was going to ask how much of a risk it would be after Yulan Lopetegui mm -hmm. and someone who'd come from 
you know, the, the Spain job. Yeah. To, to, would it be a risk to take another international manager? Yeah, well, you know, I think, obviously, domestically, as a manager, you're hands-on day after day. Um, internationals, you know, it, it's only every few months. I think the one thing that he does have in his favour is that you look at that Belgian squad, he's dealt with some very big characters, mm -hmm. you know, so that wouldn't be an issue. But I go back to Zidane, you know, you, you go to the Copa del Rey over, over Christmas. It was there for them to go, right, we want to go and win the Champions League. Obviously, they fell by the wayside to a certain extent in the league. But what they did with the Copa del Rey, they gave players like Benzema, like Modric, like Ronaldo. They gave them a rest, so to speak, and gave them a little bit of a mini pre-season ready for the second stage of the season. And I think when people look at Real Madrid last season, and, and I've already said you talk about the flair players, the way that they played, they were incredibly fit. They suffocated teams the way that they went about them. And that's what they've got to get back to. It's under Lopetego this season, they've become even more possession-based, but it's as though they've seemed to have forgotten about the defensive side of the things. Did, did Martinez bring on the, the teams that he worked with? Did he bring on Wigan and, and Everton enough to suggest that he could, he could do that at Real Madrid? Attacking-wise, attacking-wise he did, but my own honest opinion wouldn't... I don't think attacking-wise is a problem at Real Madrid. I think it's the defensive side of things. You know, there's... There's over half of the league that have conceded less than them in the league, or well over half of the league. So the problem is, is getting the stability at the back, getting that back in, back into uh, into shape. Because the one thing you would say is, is time at Wigan and Everton, very pleasing on the eye. But at times, you know, you, you only have to look at the, the the recorders in terms of the ranks. It's okay they had the third 2013-14, the third best defensive record. But other than that. You know, you're looking further down the line, and that's where I personally think when you look at Real Madrid now, that's where they need to get back to because. A lot of teams have been scoring goals. You look at uh, Sevilla, I think they scored three against them recently. You know, and that's not something that you probably saw that often under Zidane because of the way that they worked as a unit. Craig, you, you pointed out quite rightly that a lot of the, the managers who Real Madrid would perhaps be looking at are tied up in contracts with, with clubs who are in a, a good position and that they, they might not necessarily be available to Real Madrid. And also the fact that you think that they might go on and, and spend this summer to try and refresh that, that squad, because it, it, it is it getting older yeah, yeah, and, it it, and it is an ageing squad at, at Real Madrid. Is there a case, though, for saying, if you've got managers who are not too fussed about being taken away from their other clubs, if you've got players who are you know, you, you, on their way out of the club, if there's a big overhaul coming, that maybe Madrid isn't as attractive a job as, as it once was. Um, not saying it won't get back to them. It's a temporary, maybe even a one-season thing. No, look, it, 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 it does need a lot of, you know, it, it needs a lot of new faces, it needs a lot of energy, it needs a lot of legs. Um, you know, you, you were talking about the back four, but you look at Ramos, Varane, mm. you know, just got in best team in the world yeah. you know they were the, in the 11 the best 11 players the best they were the two center backs in the world team of the year um, but a lot going on in front their intensity in the press is nowhere near but i also you know there's there's one or two players who haven't quite got that level that they once had which happens with age it does happen and the intensity of what real madrid have to play up because champions league's everything to them la liga the north fronts of all competitions i just believe they've let a lot of squad players go who have been you know, they've got a lot of money for them, but they need those squad players. And that's what Zidane was able to do over the last, not just last year, the year before mm -hmm. that as well. There was a lot of, you know, certain players weren't playing at certain times, but he looked at it at the end of the season and that's when the trophies are handed out. That's when his, if his team's in a top condition, then that's when you've got a chance of winning those trophies. Why, why do you think they are going to spend money? Because what, what, they've that, always that got basis? it. But they they've, have, but not over the yeah. last couple of seasons. But they haven't when needed to because they've just stadium. been disguising... They've been disguising Champions League. They've been winning Champions Leagues. Why would you want to... Like, if you were an owner, I'm looking at it and saying, well, you know, I'm, well, what do we need to spend? Well, we've just won Champions League. Mm. Then we've just done it again. But you look at that compared to, to Manchester City who are at the top. And all right, Manchester City and, and PSG, you would expect to be big spenders. And then Manchester yeah. United, we well, know Man that they have done Well, Manchester City and PSG are spending to get to where Real Madrid are. The but, yes, well, what about then... Manchester United, if you look at them from three years ago, what about if you look at, at Barcelona? Are they, are they not, have they not been at Real the, Madrid's level? The one thing I would say about Real Madrid, and it's, it's a word that's associated with them constantly, is Galacticos. That's where they spend their money. You know, they, go, they go big on, a, on an individual play. Do they be have like, any? Football's changing. Football is changing. We talk about Messi, we talk about Ronaldo. OK, you've got Mbappe and Neymar. But after that, the Galacticos, they're not around as much as used to. We only have to look at the World Cup. It was a collective team. Is Baylor Galactico? Obviously, so, he's, yeah, but he's, he's, already, he's already at the football club. Do you know what I mean? So, oh, that's, what I mean. that's what I mean. Yeah. Do they have them? Do they... Well, they, look, they, 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 they world record fee on getting them. 
and I'd say winning four European Cups. Yeah, oh, you're yes. A, you're a galactical. <laughs> but, yeah. but as yes, he is. 100%, but he's in terms of... He's, or, he's obviously already at the football club, but yeah. I'm looking around now and thinking, right, OK, the way that Real Madrid have gone about it in the past, when you look at your Ronaldos, your two Ronaldos, your, your Zidane's, your Figo's, the Galacticos, your David Beckham from Manchester United, the problem is now is that, like I said, football is becoming more of a collective now. So, yes, there are still some so-called Galacticos around, but they're few and far between. So, therefore, from Real Madrid's perspective, the money that they've spent a lot of the time, it's not been collectively, it's been on individual players that gives them that wow factor. But if there isn't as many of them about, then obviously you've got a, you've got a smaller pond yeah, to and fish the, in. the ones that have been about, the ones they were interested in, because they, they wanted Mbappé, they wanted Neymar. Mm. Difficult to get Neymar from Barcelona, course, but they yeah. proved the case with Figo... Uh, that it can be done, you're dealing with different money now. It's not what you have as Madrid. You're dealing with countries who have billions mm. and billions who are able to go and spend now. So PSG can rival you. They can offer that little bit more because we're dealing with different money that Madrid have always been the, the main people. You know, the, as a club, they've always been able to spend more than any other football club. That isn't the case anymore. I think... But that, that's, that's kind of kind of taking me along where we were, we were starting off at the, at the beginning, which is, are Real but, Madrid still Real Madrid? I mean, you, you say it's would, still the pinnacle. Where but... would Neymar want to go? Where would Mbappe well, he, well, he, want to go? Where does it, Hazard want to go? Hazard is dreams to play mm. for Real Madrid. All these players, and that's the same, Barcelona are in that as well. Mm. I believe you can ask, you know, where... Even if I'm, like, say I support Liverpool. Mm. You give me one. Say so you do. Let's yeah, just pretend, do. shall we? Let's have a do. <laughs> you give me one football club in this world, apart from Liverpool. Like I, I always wanted to play for Cardiff because I grew up there. Yeah. Mm. So that was always, you know, always on my radar. Always something I wanted to do. But if you offered me one football club out there I want to go and play for, it would be Barcelona. From, from a man that's me living in Canada, that's me you, being up. The, that's the one. That, club and that's you who said Real Madrid's the pinnacle. <laughs> yeah. from, a, from a manager's, from a manager's <laughs> perspective. And you hear a lot of managers talking about it now. We've, we've heard Klopp talking about it. We've talked Guardiola talking about it. Talk about projects. Going to a football club. You know, Klopp's gone into Liverpool the way he's done things. It's been a project for him, you know, slowly but surely, you know, starting to rise. Guardiola going in at Manchester City. Is Real Madrid, is Real Madrid a project? And I know, like you say, it's the pinnacle for managers, but we're starting to see younger managers now wanting to get a football club where they can say, right, this is a project for me to get, you know, to slowly get to here. With Real Madrid... Is Real Madrid a project? It could be a rebuild to a certain it, extent. You'll never get the time for it to be a project, yeah. but it's going on behind the scenes where yeah. it doesn't involve you. You're not here for a project, you're here to get us results. Yeah. That's why you're at the biggest club in the world. And that's why they have such a quick changeover of mm. managers if they're not getting the results and the, and the they're, trophies they're, that they expect. Look, they're the most successful club in the world. Um, biggest fan base in the world. And I know one or two might question that. Mm. They really are. Um, and what they, you know, they, they're, a, they're a different institution to what you know, Barcelona as well, and there's one or two clubs who can creep into that. We're, we're lucky enough in the Premier League that we have one or two. But um, these football clubs are different, and Real Madrid is different. Listen, they've got rid of managers for winning European Cups, something that we would <laughs> yeah. couldn't get our heads around. But it's part of mm. what they do. It's what they do, and that's what, you know, if they've won the most European Cups, who's to say their model's wrong? It, are they a, a less attractive you can't, not, I know you're getting to... I'm not, I'm not, I promise, I'm not, I'm not trying to put the point that Real Madrid are not the huge club that they are, are not still the huge club that they are. All I'm asking is if, at this moment in time, with, as we've seen, an ageing squad, with a, re a recent history of not spending very much money, and with that kind of um, weight of expectation uh, um, on winning trophies under those circumstances, do you think there's a case that managers might be... Maybe. And maybe are looking and thinking, maybe, maybe, maybe not right now, cause, because whoever yeah. takes it over now might not be there for I very think, long. I think the way management is going now, management ideals, I think I'd probably say that the, the average manager, the average age is getting younger, hmm. I would say. You know, so we, we look at Real Madrid, OK, you know, Zidane went in there um, and obviously he was a Real Madrid legend and one of the younger managers. But I think now what we're seeing is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of younger managers and, OK, you can say, well, you know what, you can have the Real, Ma Real Madrid job and then if, if you end up losing the job, then you're still going to make a lot of money. But I think what you're seeing now is younger managers, and I go back to we're talking about projects. When you listen to some of the top managers, we've got, we're fortunate that we've got some of the best in the world in the Premier League. You look at Klopp, you look at Guardiola, the projects, what they're doing. And like I say, with, with Real Madrid, it's going on behind the scenes and what have you. 
I think managers now want a club where they can go into and reshape everything themselves. And we're seeing that now. We're starting to see the fruits of the labour at Manchester City, Liverpool in particular, without question. And they want to be there for a, for a number of years. But whereas with Real Madrid, it's not going to be seen as a project. And I just think younger managers, it's the pinnacle as a manager, no doubt about it. But I think younger managers are probably looking at things from a different perspective now. Um, Dan Sutcliffe got in touch to ask, out of the managers available, who would be the best fit for Real Madrid, who's big enough to match their egos? We kind of talked about the fact that a lot of the managers maybe they would want mm. wouldn't be available, but if all things were equal, if they could get who they wanted, who'd be the best fit? Oh, look, who, who are available? Yeah. Oh. Who isn't, who isn't available? Oh, okay. you know, Any, are you saying anybody? Anyone. Anyone uh, Guardiola. Yeah. Really? For Real Madrid? Yeah, Guardiola. If you're, if you're taking everything away... Even take the Barcelona connection take, away. If you're, taking it, that, yeah. if you're taking everything away, he is, in, in my mind, Manchester City manager, he is the best manager on the planet. And if you're only taking away the, the idea that it would be a manager who was available or not, then what would you, What's then what available? Would you say? Oh, come on, Danny, is it? You play the game. <laughs> every, 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 oh, I don't know. Is that, we're not going really, to force you to do it. It's we're not really going to send difficult you in to negotiate one. the contract. No, it is. It's, but would it's, it be Mourinho? Would it be Conte? Would it well, there's be... been talk about Mourinho yeah, because, you know, better the devil you know, so to speak. Mm. But obviously we know how that, how that ended there and the situation with players and, and what have you. It's... But it, I mean, perhaps he's the defensive coach that you're you're talking about, the one who can... can well, I think he still holds a record in the league for the most goals in the season. Yeah. But... I, it's such a difficult. But that's not one. where they need help, is it, Danny? Then. No, but is defensively. It, yeah. That's you know, what, that's what I'm saying. That, so they're fine. They, yeah. He he would sort them out defensively. But as in terms of it, I think when you look at it, I think you know, Pochettino would he be a good fit for them? You know, there's would obviously. He? I think he would be a good fit for them. <laughs> You're just trying to put words in my mouth, I'm aren't really you? That's great now, you've got to go to great. I promise you, I'm not trying to get you to say I think Mauricio Pochettino would be great. I'm just, I'm just asking, I'm, I'm looking at, a, at the problems a, that lucky. they have and the kind there's of There's a load of good managers at the moment. Yeah. Mm. Um, really, really talented managers. And we're, we're lucky we have them in the Premier League. Yeah. You know, so probably the three, some of the best out there now, we're, we're lucky enough we yeah. get to see week in, week out. So um, I'm sure they would be... The type of managers they would, you know, they would be looking up, but wherever they can get, you ain't going to be able to get them now. Mm. Not the clubs that are, not the contracts that are under. So, you know, it's going to be an interesting search for Madrid, um, and I believe the manager they do get in might only be there to the end of the yeah. season.